First, we've got the one and only Jenny McCartney in the booth, the social media goddess herself, uh, pushing those buttons, making the show go again today. And, uh, well, yeah, the co-hosts. I guess we'll go with the co-hosts. we got some of those, of course, coming to us uh, live via satellite, as always, from his, uh, well, his perch, I guess, high atop the Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada is the one and only Louis Lawless. Yes, high atop there. Are you there, Louis? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yes, we got that. Don't worry. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? <laughs> <laughs> now you go right ahead, sir. We've we've got you covered. Uh, it's about f***ing time. Move on. Move on. All right. And also joining us from his wonderful, beautiful, uh, stately... I must say, apartment uh, in Manhattan here in the big city is the one, the only, uh, what's his name again? Oh, yes, Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh, are, are you ready, sir? What the f***? Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Good. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, Gilbert Godfrey joining us from his lovely home here in the city. And uh, also joining us is, of course, the one, the only George Takei, all the way from his home in Los Angeles, California. George, thank you for coming. I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, and, and thank you. That's that's awesome. Now, well, is this thing on? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's on. Is this on? Is this on? I can't tap it. I would tap it, but I won't do that. So. There you go. That's well... Right. Only one, Meeps. That's us. The only one. HTLA Radio 1 New York. And you're here and you're listening. And this is Straight Talk. And, yeah, we've got 90 minutes of uh, springtime in the city stories for you tonight. And, um, yeah, lots of social injustice stories. I'm in the mood for for ranting. We said we weren't going to do a rant show, but here we are. And it's going to turn into a rant show. It is, yes. <laughs> I can't help but be angry about the stories. You know, there's just too much to be excited about. Everybody's got to bring us down with all this stuff. Stupidity. That's right. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that, too, because we've got a great show coming up for you that uh, we've got in development for a little while now, and we're going to launch that Wednesday, and we'll talk about that a bit later. That's pretty exciting. That's called The Spotlight with Kate and Crash. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and uh, tonight, a bit of a free-for-all. We're going to tear it up for you on tonight's Straight Talk. Everything from the day's events to some politics good and goodiness and the struggle, of course, to maintain home and work. We'll get into it all tonight. Professional businesswomen that I talk to, they do the work, but it's just the corporate work, and they think that's enough because, damn it, I've, I've just put 12 hours a day in today in, in my job. and right they feel deserving of something else not to come home and take care of the kids and not to come home and take care of the husband and not to come home and take care of anything else right it's time for them to kick their feet up now and go go hit the bars and relax or something because they've earned it and i'm here to say that as a man we 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 do that all the time we always have we we go out and work our full-time jobs or more right and we come home and we're still expected to be the dad. We're still expected to help the kids with the homework. We're still expected to, to, to have activities and stuff with our family and have that interaction and put that time in. Sure. Maybe that's why we get 100% of our pay instead of 70% of our pay. Right. Right. Well, you're not... Well, in the tradition now, men are also expected to do half the housework. And half of all that stuff, whereas it used to just be before, you know, the garbages and the lawns and all that stuff that you do, the man stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yes, and unfortunately, in some cases, in a great majority of, of the households, now more often than not, the women are working and 
you know, I have so many, you know, friends that I know that their husbands take care of the kids and drop the kids at school and do the school activities and do the projects and yes. wash the clothes. And yes, the- but, yes, but with that comes the dreaded beta male because there's not a single one right. of those men that I have met that I would look up to in battle. No, of course not. And <laughs> this is, to our, to our thinking, you know, to our thinking, and while it took us years in, uh, and while it took us years in practice, it, it was an ideology that we shared from the moment that we met anyway. Yeah. The whole, you know, that was our vision for what the ideal family was. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. This program is intended for mature audiences only. If you have any homicidal or suicidal feelings, please consult the doctor before listening to this program. Oh, yeah. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is 9 p.m. Eastern on HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Tonight, Tuesday, so it's crash talking. That's right. Yes. Welcome to the Mosby Show. That's right. So we're talking tonight all about that funky little prosecutor we all know as the Marilyn Mosby. Oh yeah, we're going to rip her a new one tonight. That's what this show's all about. And your calls are welcome. That's right. 914-873-6092 or 1NYC. That's right. You can call in tonight and voice your opinion over this Mosby chicky. Yeah, what the hell's going on? Miscarriage of justice. That's right. Well, I'm going to rip her a new one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stick around. You don't want to miss this one, boys and girls. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We got the kids in the house tonight. We're uh, We're ready to go here. Yes, we are. So I'm breaking down and uncovering some pretty suspicious facts regarding the Marilyn Mosby situation. Yes, the prosecutor who brought charges against all six officers implicated in the death of Freddie Gray after a suspiciously short 11-day investigation. Just to shut everyone up and stop the riots? Well, you bet. We'll be taking your calls as well if you'd like to ring in on this. Uh, obvious joke that's really gone too far. Yeah, that's right. It's time to... Uh, Time to ring that school bell, kids. Yeah. It's Tuesday night, and you got to tune to Crash Talk. HTLA Radio 1. HTLA Radio 1 in New York City proudly presents Crash Talk. Thank you. We got a full house in the house tonight. Oh, yes, we do, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So, welcome to Crash Talk tonight, HDLA at Radio 1 New York and uh, the Mosby Show. Yes, it's kind of like the Cosby Show, only different. Yes, it's, it's not the Cosby Show. Although I thought I was actually seeing, uh, oddly enough, a, I don't know, wasn't exactly a rerun, but, you know, I, I swore it was Robin Gibbons or, or one of the Cosby girls up there at the podium in Baltimore just a few scant days ago announcing charges for all six officers involved in the, uh, well, the death, apparently, the, the wrongful death, of course, of Mr. Freddie Gray, <clears throat> snapped neck, apparently, uh, um, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm guessing that all six of them must have broke his neck simultaneously. Hands over hands kind of thing, I guess, you know, or, or you know, I made the uh, comment on coffee and cigarettes there. Uh, how do you get six pairs of policemen's hands around the same baseball bat? Yeah, yeah those details, they, they just, they just elude, don't they? They just, who knows, could be anything. Yes, we'll just carry on. Yeah, who knows? Well, anyway, it wasn't one of the Cosby kids that was uh, up on that podium there in front of uh, Baltimore's little uh, little, uh, happy building. I guess we'll call it the happy building. There were so many happy black people there that day. Uh, When she made the announcements, of course, that she's indicting all six, of course, (laughs) in the wrongful death of Freddie Gray. Now, ignoring the obvious, I don't know, what's the word, the the, the obvious logistics of these six people killing this man, uh, the first thing that struck me during the announcement was, of course, the uh, mention that the, uh, the most severe of the charges going out to all the officers was the one driving the prison truck, which was carrying prisoners. Mm hmm. Well, Marilyn Mosby is Baltimore State's attorney, but uh, well, I did some checking. She's, uh, she's, she's a lot more than that. You might remember <clears throat> one of the stories out uh, earlier in the week about her long family history with cops. And, of course, I guess the, the headline is designed to grab you because she's black and if she's got a long history with cops. You know, statistically, not racially, statistically, that's never good for the black person, is it? Well, let me, tell, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Now, the Maryland prosecutor who has criminally charged these six Baltimore police officers in the death of Freddie Gray... Well, she actually comes from a long line of police officers in her family... But she has said that she would not hesitate to prosecute cops when the facts warrant charges. Remember that statement, she says, when the facts warrant charges. It's very important that you stick with me with me on this show tonight because I'm, I'm going to be coming back to a number of things throughout this uh, this show. And when I come back to them, you're going to have a little light bulb in your head that goes, oh, yeah, wait a minute, WTF. Baltimore State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby, a 35-year-old African-American former city prosecutor, also happens to be married to Nick Mosby, a Baltimore City councilman who represents the neighborhood in which Gray died. All right? Interesting fact, isn't that? What do you what do you think the conversation around the Mosby dinner table the night before she decided yes I'm going to charge all six officers in this what do you, what do you think that conversation might have consisted of do you think in any way shape or form it may have included a conversation about good old Nick's lovely voters out there yeah Nick wants to keep his job doesn't he fine fine upstanding city councilman that he is well of course he would in fact. Uh, Somebody uh, recently said in politics, 70% of your time is spent looking for money for re-election. Well, I'm willing to bet money. I don't know for a fact because I'm not a city councilman, but I'm willing to bet money. And he's on the lookout for votes too at all times. And if his wife should come back with, oh, I don't know, a a statement regarding no charges will be pressed uh, against any of these officers uh, with the uh, death of Freddie Gray, Uh, I'm just going to guess here. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say, you know what? The voters aren't going to like that. Yes. Especially, especially, seeing as how your husband is the councilman who represents that neighborhood in which Gray died. That's that's kind of ground black zero, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. In a statement, uh, Mosby's office said that she would uphold the law in every neighborhood, including her own. And she actually said this, regardless of if her husband is a councilman within that district 
where numerous crimes occur or not. Mm-hmm. She said that. So it's like she's actually kind of opening it up to, yeah, that's, that's my husband on the, the, the council there. So what? She figured nobody was going to have the brains to put together. 